Welcome to the Daily Jerry Anderson podcast, which today begins with the presenter, as usual, making little sense, talking in riddles and jumping from one unlikely subject to the other in a higgledy-piggledy manner that bodes ill for the future of broadcasting in this province. Let's start the programme. Hello, good morning, everyone. Uh, have I to say hello? No, that's them all answering all across right. the country. All right. We wait for them to give them the decency. Good morning, everyone. The number to ring if you want to contact this program is 08459 555678. The email address is jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk and the text messaging address 81771. You notice that little emphasis there? It'll bring the people in. Yeah, yeah. You know, be nice. Right, uh, jokes for smart people. Frost was very bright. Or is very bright. He is very bright, bright, yeah. yeah. During that interview with Nixon, it was, it was great. But he was also in his early career, uh, nobody liked him, you know. So... Uh, somebody said about him that he rose without trace. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> because nobody That's ever thought he was any good, you see. Aye. And he was surrounded by all these geniuses, you know, like Peter Cook and all those guys, and they didn't like him. And uh, apparently, who was it said? Peter Cook, I think it was. He said that one of the great regrets in his life was that he saved David Frost from drowning. Oh, dear. And apparently he did. Apparently there was some kind of party, and, you know, there was a bit of Sherbert on the go. That's right. And apparently uh, David Frost was in swimming. I think it was Peter Frost. Yeah, P- Peter Cook, okay. Peter Frost. Yeah. I'm sure it was Peter Cook. And, uh, and, and, and Frost was actually got into trouble and, and, you know, was actually drowning. And Peter Cook spotted this and dived in and pulled him out. He said he regretted it his whole life. He sure is Peter Cook. Peter Cook strikes me as a sort of person who'd be afraid of water, like a cat. Well, apparently he saved uh, 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 David Frost. can't see him. Can you see, can you see Big Cookie? Cookie? Is that what they called them? Oh, I just, you just made that up. Oh, right. Can you right. see him jumping into the water? Yes, I can see it. I can see I can it. See I can it. see him shouting. Can you see David Walliams swimming the channel? Who? David Walliams. Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah. Well, you see, but could you see that before he swam the channel? Before he swam the channel, would you ever say, look, see that guy there? He's an athlete. No. You would never have thought that. Right, jokes. I want to try these out, don't you? This is a, a series called Jokes for Smart People. Do you know the way I hate jokes? Yes. Of any kind? There's some jokes that not everybody gets. Now, I'm, I'm not going to say it's a bad thing if you don't get this. Uh, it depends on how long it takes you to get these jokes. But I've only one ear. Have you? You've still got the ear, you see. The old Van Gogh impression's coming yeah, along yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, see if, see if you get these. What do we want? Bigger placards. When do we want them? No. Yeah. No, I know, I understand. That's okay, it's I'm okay. Not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, That's all right. I didn't think you were waiting for a reaction. No, 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 yeah. no. Yeah. If, if you get it, just say yes. Okay, right. What do we want? Binger placards. Yes, well, when do we want them? No, no. No, no W. Right, okay. You see, a lot of people out there haven't yeah. got that yet. Yeah. These are jokes for smart people. BBC News. An ultralight plane has crashed into a Ferris wheel mm-hmm. in a village north of Sydney, trapping four people. Mm-hmm. Australian officials say some people dream of being a pilot, others simply fail to see the attraction. The, the, he didn't see the wheel? That's it. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's good so far. I believe a lot of conflict in the Wild West could have been avoided completely if cowboy architects had made their towns big enough for everybody. <laughs> no. It's, it's not bad. This I know, it's all right. This town ain't big enough no, for both like, of us. No, yes, yeah. this town ain't big enough for the both of us. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know, that's okay. That's <laughs> I like that. I like it see, too. a lot of people don't get those I jokes. I like that. I like that. A lot of people don't get those jokes. That's all I'm saying. It's, mm. it's one of the, some of these jokes for smart people. And I'm not saying that we are smart people. No. But all I'm saying, I have a time to study them, and I realise why that they call them jokes for smart people. Yeah, because if you go to a pub and say, what do you want, bigger placards, what do you want them? No! Yes. What's he going to do? Yeah. He's going to look at you as if he's going, what, 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 what are you drinking? I'd say large brandy, please. Yes. <laughs> as usual, I take pleasure in winkling a little unacceptable information from Carlos Interruptus, information about his distant past that has been culled from informers. Information that I would rather have remained unrevealed. I heard something about you at the weekend. Is this is unusual. This is uh, it's usually me saying that to you. I heard something about you at the weekend. I believe you were kicked out of the choir in P5. I told you about that. No, you never. I did so. You never told me I about that. I did so. Well, tell me about it again. I told you. You never told me. I'll tell you who the man, the very man was, and we were looking at his likeness this morning. Yes. Giles Doherty. Are you serious? Yes. And, uh, that's it amazing, a teacher? isn't it? 
Yes. A music teacher and yes. a regular teacher. Yes. I didn't know that. And and, and I bear no grudge, no animosity <laughs> towards him to this day. I, as a matter of fact, he's, he's, he's one of nature's gentlemen. He is? Yes, he's and a he, nice so man. You're, you must have been really, I really to- bad. No, I told you why. Why would, and, and I why would this man... A paragon of virtue and a respected man in our mm-hmm. city, a retired man who's now getting on a bit, but looks 20 years Brilliant. younger. Yes. And he, a man who would harm nobody, no. threw you out of the choir. What? He didn't. I, I, I failed the audition. Oh, was that all? I was an X Factor. <laughs> you know, that's what it was like. Oh, I thought it was because of bad behaviour. No. I wanted to know what you did. Sure, I demonstrated to you what I did and you said, and you agreed with Giles' story as to why uh, the, the, the action they took. I can't remember that at all. Because but through nerves, I couldn't do the scale. Do you know when they when around the class, right? We're looking for a group of boys now to sing in the choir. Right. You know, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Right. You see? Yes. I'm just going to ride everyone. You see? Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Do, re, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. We're doing all that, you see? And yes. then it came to me. And what did you do? I was so nervous. I just went, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. <laughs> you see? See how nervous I was? And I wanted India's choir. Can you give me that scale again? Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm nervous, wee boys standing there. And he interpreted this as a lack of musical ability. Uh, Whereas, in actual fact, it was trepidation and nerves yes. on your part. Oh, but then he came back to me, and you know, as, as, as he's walking up, you know, up, up the line, the desk, <laughs> and he took a step back and he looked at me. And he says, Your father was such a good singer. <laughs> <laughs> and he walked on. <laughs> what happened to you? See, my father has a cup in the fish. My father was a good singer. So right? he thought when it came to me, and that's what it was with me. Mm-hmm. He, should have, he should have taken me into a wee room on my own. Oh, <laughs> you know no, what no. I mean? But no, I should have, the Christian know. Brothers used to do that. No. Uh, yeah. and I, that's how I failed. Who uh, told you that? I'm never you mind uh, where I get my information. You don't never tell me where you find out things about me, and you find out many things about me which i rather you didn't know, and you never tell me your source either. So you'll just have to lump it. Modern cinema appears to have left the presenter behind. Not so long ago, he claimed not to understand a movie called Inception, citing it as the first movie that had left him completely puzzled. He has now seen another one. Or you got them in jam, and you took the stones out, and you put them in the side of your plate. Yeah. And then that's where you learned your counting game. (laughs) Tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor. I went to see that movie. (laughs) All right. I (laughs) have no idea... What it was about. What? I, I went to see that movie, Tinker Taylor's Soldier Spy. Have you, see, have you seen that movie? Have you I seen didn't. that movie? I didn't. I, I, Emma, did you see Tinker, Tinker Taylor's Soldier Spy? But I was told that it's very complicated. I have no idea what it's about. So? And I make here. no bones about saying to people. And mm-hmm. do you know something? I read reviews in the paper. Yes. And people are saying, what a great, great yeah. movie. A wonderfully, wonderful plot. And I think they're all... Lion, I don't think anybody knows what it's about, but they're afraid to admit it. I am sitting here, and I am saying I have no idea what that movie was about, right? And I make no bones about this. And I don't care if people call me stupid. I don't care if people call me dopey. I have no idea. I sat through it, and halfway through it, I was going to myself, what is this about? And there was nobody ever said anything. Everybody just sits there and looks grumpy. Well, did, you, did you not think of walking out? No. no. <laughs> There's a point. No, I <laughs> thought that maybe the penny would drop. <laughs> that maybe at some stage I would realise what it was. Because I was trying hard. <laughs> you know, and I'm not... Well, I'm, hmm. I, I'm not Einstein, but I'm not, you know, Dumbo either. You know, I can kind of put things together. I was waiting to see if anything would make sense. And then it ended. The talk turns to the weather. Usually a sign that all other avenues of conversation have been exhausted. But no, the presenter reveals an obvious fetish concerning what BBC news readers refer to as brollies. A man showed me a wonderful thing on the iPhone, and I suppose on the internet, but he showed this to me on the iPhone. He showed me the progress of the rain on Saturday. Do you know what, on, what, on what, TV what, when you what? see the, uh, the, the, the chart yeah. and it shows you where the rain's going? He had it in his hand. And he showed you where the rain was going. And the rain covered Belfast and Dublin in, in a kind of a slanty, and the northwest escaped. But sure, what good is that to you? If it's raining, it's raining. It means if it's not raining, it, it's not raining. It means you don't need your umbrella. That's what it means. But if it's raining, you need your umbrella. You don't need an iPhone. If it's raining, yeah, you, it's yeah, raining. You, you get up in the morning, and you look at your iPhone, and you see where the rain's going to go. 
and you see it's not going to be over London Dray. So he said to myself, I spit on that umbrella. But if you look at it, you live in Belfast, you say, just buy his umbrella all day. Have you an umbrella? I have five. You have not. I have five umbrellas. Because you know what happens to me? I get an umbrella, I put it in the boot of my car, and then I park my car, and then I go somewhere. The rain pisses down. Then I have to buy an umbrella, or else be soaked. And you know, I would get a pleurisy. I get a pleurisy, so I would. So then I bring the umbrella back and add it to the one that's in the car. Then the next time I go somewhere, maybe two or three weeks later, I park the car. So if you had an iPhone? I wouldn't know to take the umbrella or not. But I have an iPhone in my pocket. But I don't use it as a rule. (laughs) Paul (laughs) wants to talk to you, by the way. (laughs) That was nearly a joke there. Hi, rubber gub. Pronunciation, or rather the abuse of it, has been an albatross circling the presenter for many years. Pronunciation is a problem for those whose basic education was lacking, forcing them to learn solely from books. They never heard people actually say in the words. It's elementary and fundamental. Because uh, O is a very non-Irish sound. O. Leo. O. And uh, go and go and take the pictures. Go and take. Go and take. Go and take. Even, even with Bibbledy. the uh, uh. Bibbledy. You know the word Bibbledy, sir? I wouldn't be able to go. So in, in Derry they say, I wouldn't bibbledy go. So I, I'm going to publish this book. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this. It's called the Bibbledy Book. <laughs> the Bibbledy Book of all the things that people need to learn when they come to Derry Stoke London Derry for the City of Culture 2013. All the things they need to understand, all the little quirks of language. It's called the Bibbledy Book. Right. Will you help I, me on this, show? I certainly shall. Or the Book of Bibbledy? Hmm. Which is the best one? I like the Bibbly book. I like the Bibbly book. I think it's a nice ring. Because if you read the book, you'll be able to understand everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Bibbly. Bibbly is be able to. See, people can't say be, and they can't say able, really, and they can't say to, so they say Bibble. Bibbly. You see, it's an area. And what, what were we talking about originally? Drowned. Drowned. Grounded. See, oh, I can't say drowned. No, I mean, sorry, I can't say drowned. Drowned. Because drowned. it means you have to drowned. you have to pronounce your D at the end if it makes sense. Drowned. I drowned. drowned. So people in there, the people up here say, "What did you, what did you drowned. say?" If I said to you, uh, uh, what, "What happened to that friend of yours who lost his life?" And you say he was yeah. drowned. No, I wouldn't say. It was yes, drowned. Yes, you would. No, I don't think it was. But yes, I'm you saying, would. I'm saying it to myself. No, I would say he was drowned. No, you wouldn't I would say, say that. Drowned. I would say drowned. Emma, what would you say? Drowned it. No, she wouldn't. Emma would say drowned. It what would drowned. you say? Drowned. Would you say? Wouldn't you want to say drowned? Eh? Drowned, no, you Emma. wouldn't. She, she's she's just from pretending Muffel. She's swanky because you're on the wireless. She's from Donegal. Actually, it doesn't matter. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>